Hey, word on the street is you're ready to take your photography to the next level and stop shooting full automatic. Woo, it is a good day because I am ready to show you how. If you're ready to just go shoot manual, then let's get this show on the road. What's up everybody, it's your boy the Mackie Mouse with Mackie Mouse Media here today to start your journey into manual photography and video. You're gonna use your camera to your full potential, you're gonna get off those auto dials, and we're gonna have a really good time. Before we can talk about anything regarding any manual settings on your camera, on any kind of camera, the first thing you have to understand is exposure. And that's what we're gonna to tackle today, that elusive Bermuda Triangle of photography, the exposure triangle. So we're gonna jump right into it right now. What is exposure? What does that mean? What is the definition? Exposure is the measurement of light, of how much light hits the sensor of your camera and is therefore captured into the picture. It's not just the amount of light, but how that light is spread. So how dark are your dark parts of the image and how light are the light parts of the image and how does that spread throughout everything in between and so without further ado there's your exposure triangle right there there are three basic functions that your camera uses to properly expose an image those three settings are shutter speed aperture and your ISO so let's dive into each one of those individually so let's break this down shutter speed so inside the camera is a shutter the shutter, as the name implies, opens and closes. The shutter is directly in front of this sensor, and when you snap the button, that shutter opens and closes for a certain amount of time, hence the setting shutter speed. It's not about the speed in which it opens, it's about how long it stays open and exposes the sensor to that light. So if we're talking about time here, then obviously the longer the shutter is open, then the longer the sensor is exposed, and hence more light hits the sensor. So if you want your image to be brighter, then the shutter speed is gonna to have to open up for longer to let the sensor get more light. Obviously the opposite is true. If you want the picture to be darker, then you want that shutter to open and close quickly so that not as much light hits the sensor of the camera. There's another thing that shutter speed affects depending on how you set it that will change the look of your image and that is motion blur. So the longer you have the sensor open, the more light has a chance to smudge across the frame. So think about it this way. You have like a, a bicyclist, right, riding by your frame and you wanna snap that moment in time. If you leave the shutter open for too long, he'll just smudge across the frame. But if you open and close it quickly, the light only has a chance to hit the sensor from that one spot. So now you've frozen a moment in time. So depending on the look you're trying to do with your picture, you can either smudge things, think like a waterfall, you want the water to kind of smudge across and look really silky, or you want to snap things in time, like a kid on a soccer field kicking a ball and you just want to snap that moment so everything's crisp and in focus. So one really quick thing about notation with shutter speed, uh, shutter speed is written in a fraction. So think like one slash 250, one 250th of a second, right? Um, on certain cameras, they will drop the one slash because it's understood that these all have a one slash in front of it. They're all in fractions, but you can go lower than one half a second. You can go to one full second or five full seconds or 30 full seconds. And the way that you notate that is a quotation mark next to the number. That means that this is seconds. So if you see a number 10, that means one tenth of a second but if you see a 10 with a quotation mark, that means 10 full seconds. There's a place you'll probably find it on an SLR. SLRs tend to have screens like this um, right on the top of the camera that are not electronic, they're crystal, uh, and it'll sometimes give you some information. You'll find it there. Uh, if your camera does not have an, a crystal display on the top like one of these, um, then somewhere on your screen it should tell you in the display what the shutter speed is. Usually it's in the bottom left, but not always. If you want a real life example of shutter speed, think about the eyelid of your eye um, that is exposing the back of your eye to light for a certain amount of time every time you blink. Or don't blink for my Doctor Who fans. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. They are fast, faster than you could believe. Don't turn your back. Don't look away and don't blink. Right? 
I can't be the only Whovian in here, I'm just saying. <laughs> Ooh, that was a lot already. We're gonna try and wrap this up a little more succinct right now. <laughs> All right, so that is the first thing in the exposure triangle, which is shutter speed. We are going to move on to subject number two, which is aperture. Aperture is another mechanical device. Instead of it being in your camera body, like shutters, uh, an aperture is inside the lens itself. So in the lens, um, on the front there's a piece of glass, on the back there's a piece of glass, inside there are several more pieces of glass that bend the light, and in between all of that is a small metal circle that uh, can open really wide or close really small, and that aperture uh, decides how much light gets to the shutter, and the shutter decides how long that light hits the sensor. So the aperture is all about amount. Aperture, amount, good way to remember it. So this one uh, probably makes a lot of sense too. The bigger this circle is, uh, the more light will hit the back of the camera. And the smaller this circle is, the less light will hit the back of the camera. So if you want a brighter image, you'd have to make the aperture bigger. If you want a darker image, you'd have to constrain the amount of light by making that circle smaller. So shutter speed has that hidden like second feature of it where uh, you can control motion blur, not just brightness. Well, aperture has that too. With aperture, it's not about motion or blur. With aperture, it's about depth of field. Okay, so <laughs> depth of field is a pretty complex subject that I'll have to do an entire video about because it's not super easy to understand right away. Um, I actually talked about it in one of my five tips videos. I touched on it a little bit and I will throw that link right up here if you're interested in some tips, uh, quick tips before you leave the house uh, on beginner photography or any photography. But depth of field quite simply is how much of your image is in focus. And that's talking about um, a measurement of the distance away from the camera. So I am very close to the camera. The background is a lot further behind me. So the background right now is not in focus and I am in focus. And that is because my aperture is really open. So all you have to know is if you want your background to go all the way out of focus, like the look that you're seeing right now, make your aperture as low as possible, as open as possible. If you want everything to be in focus, think like a landscape where all the way out in the distance, you still want that to be in focus. Just make your aperture really, really small and then everything will be in focus. So we just sort of touched a little bit on the number system with notating aperture. And again, it's a little tricky because just like shutter speed, it's really meant to be read as a fraction. So apertures usually go all the way down to 1.1, even 0.9 in some cases. Um, and then they go all the way up to F22, uh, I believe is the highest uh, aperture you can have. And the lower the number, the wider the circle. The higher the number, the smaller the circle. It's also uh, written with a little F in front of it. Uh, I forgot to actually look up why the F is there, but that's just how it's always been written. So you'll see F 2.8, F 4. Um, there are very specific numbers that aperture is. Uh, so it'll go like 1.1, 1.4, 1.8, 2, 2.8, 2 they're kind of weird and random. There is no such thing as like a 2.4 aperture, for instance, or a 2.1 aperture. It goes directly from 2 to 2.8. So there's kind of a system that you just memorize and your camera will, as you click through it, you'll just see what those options are. Just know that the lower the number, the more open you're making that aperture, and the higher the number, the smaller that circle is. So if you think about it this way, uh, F4, if you read it in your head as 1 slash 4, like 1 fourth, Obviously, you can imagine that one fourth is a lot bigger than one twenty second of something. So that's an easy way to remember that 20 set, 22, F22 is a small slither of the pie. So that's a very small circle. And F4 is a really big slither of the pie. And so F4 is a lot bigger. Remember that part where I said I was gonna like shorten everything down? There's a lot of information to cover with this stuff. I'll do my best, I'll try again. So we covered shutter speed, we covered aperture. Now we're gonna cover the last piece of the puzzle and that is ISO. Now, shutter speed and aperture have everything to do with light. How much light is hitting that back of the sensor? And as you remember from the beginning of the video, exposure is defined by the amount of light that hits that sensor. Well, ISO doesn't have anything to do with the amount of light that's getting back there. ISO actually refers to the sensor itself. 
So ISO controls the sensitivity of that sensor and how responsive the sensor is to light. So the lower the ISO number, the less responsive that sensor is. The higher the ISO number, the more responsive the sensor is. So as you can imagine, uh, if the sensor is not very responsive to light, when you hit it with a certain amount of light, it's not going to glow up and be super bright. It'll be kind of on the darker side. But if you make the sensor very, very sensitive, you can hit it with a very small amount of light and everything will glow up and be really bright. So you can also use ISO to change the brightness when it hits the sensor. It's not controlling the amount of light that gets back there. I hope that made some sense. I guess it made sense to me. <laughs> so you're probably thinking, hey, I wanna make uh, my image brighter. Why don't I just crank that ISO right up? So ISO comes with a cost. When you boost ISO, because the sensor is more sensitive, it is going to introduce more grain. You've probably seen in a video those little speckly like color spots that dance a little bit uh, in the dark areas. Um, in an image, you'll get that too. Just instead of moving, you'll just see a bunch of little specks and dots on your, on your image. Um, you obviously don't want that grain because it makes things look really muddy and you lose a lot of detail. So you don't want to just start cranking your ISO up just to make it brighter you actually want the ISO to be the lowest possible while still making your picture, you know, like viewable, but you want it the lowest possible so that you introduce the least amount of grain. ISO is honestly not much more complicated than that. If you boost ISO, you get a little bit of grain, but you uh, get a brighter image. If you lower the ISO, it'll get darker, but your, your grain will be a lot less. So it's really about what you're trying to achieve. Are you trying to get it to be a cleaner, more detailed image? Then maybe try lowering your ISO. If you're trying to um, get a brighter image and you just can't with the shutter speed and aperture because of the limitations of your camera or your lens and you're in a dark scene, you're gonna have to boost your ISO up. Don't be afraid to boost your ISO just because of grain. The grain is very small and most pieces of software can kind of counteract it and smooth it out. So don't worry, don't be terrified to like boost it up, but do it with caution. Well, that's it. Shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Those are the three things that make up the exposure triangle. So let's take a look at that exposure triangle now that we understand what all these things do. So first of all, we have the normal triangle we've been looking at this whole time. And now we're gonna add in a few things that we've learned now that we've talked about each of them individually. So we're gonna add onto this triangle the things that each of these pieces affect about your picture. So we'll start with shutter speed. What is the thing that shutter speed affects? Motion blur. So something is moving quickly past your camera and you want to snap it in time, you need to make the shutter speed higher. If you want something to blur across the screen like a firework or a waterfall, you need to make the shutter speed lower. So shutter speed is affecting the motion blur in your image. What about aperture? So Aperture controls the amount of light that hits the back of that sensor, right? As we said, if you open up your aperture really big, the background will be out of focus. If you close your aperture down, remember higher numbers like 11 or 16 or 22, then everything in your scene is gonna be in focus from the stuff that's really, really close to the lens, just like that, to the stuff that's all the way back there, everything is gonna be in focus. And last but not least, ISO at the very top of the triangle, what does that affect in your image? It affects the amount of grain that is introduced uh, the higher the ISO number. So now you have a triangle of if you're trying to achieve something motion blur related, then you're going to want to change this number here. If you're trying to change something depth of field related, you're going to change here. If you're trying to control your grain, you're going to change here. You are ready to go shoot. That's the exposure triangle, there's nothing more to know. I mean, sure there is, you can do some research, but that is the basics, and now you are ready to go out and shoot the best image you've ever shot, and you're gonna do it yourself on manual, because automatic is a thing of the past. So get out there and go shoot, do it. I have faith in you. You're probably wondering, what's up with this triangle stuff? Like, why are all these things in a triangle? Well, as the triangle kind of appears on paper, uh, they are all related to each other as well. So in that real life example, a bicyclist is going by your frame and everything right now in your camera looks good. Everything is properly exposed. But you, you think, okay, I want to increase my shutter speed so that I freeze them in time. Well, that means you have to compensate by either making your aperture more open. So if it's less time on the shutter, then give it more light so that the sensor is still exposed properly. 
or you go to ISO and you make the ISO higher so that that same amount of light that's hitting the back, the sensor is now more sensitive. So that same amount of light is gonna go a longer way because of the sensitivity of the pixels on the sensor itself. So if you change one, you're gonna have to change one of the other two. And it's usually opposite. If the shutter speed goes up, the aperture goes down. If the aperture goes up, the aperture gets smaller so you're giving it less light in the back, you have to expose it for a longer amount of time so the sensor has time to pick up or do it with ISO. You kind of get it. Just keep uh, combining those three things to make your proper exposure. I encourage you to, you got it, just go shoot. Go out there and try and mess with these settings now that you understand how they work and what they are actually changing. Because if you look at your, the back of your camera, if you roll one of those dials and and make the shutter speed go higher, your image gets darker. If you roll one of the other dials and you make the aperture go higher, then your image still gets darker. And like, you don't know what the difference is unless you understand how it works. So now that you get it, mess with those things out in the field and really see the difference between higher motion blur, less motion blur, depth of field, all that stuff, while still maintaining a good exposure, making your whites nice and white, but not too bright, and making your darks nice and dark, but not all the way crushed black. You have it, you got it, I have faith in you. You're gonna do great. I cannot wait to see your pictures. Please send them to me and let's have a conversation. So that is going to wrap it up for today. I hope that demystified uh, the subject of exposure a little bit. Next time we're going to talk about metering, which is uh, a little dial in your camera that tells you uh, how exposed your shot is going to be when you take the picture. And we're also gonna talk about the histogram, which is a feature inside most cameras that actually uh, measures the amount of light after you've taken the picture. And it shows you a graph of kind of what the picture looks like so that you can look at that and then maybe take another picture and make some adjustments so you kind of know what the exposure that you're looking at is mathematically, not just by your eye. If there are any topics that you'd like me to cover on this channel, please message me on Instagram. You can shoot me an email or you can just comment down below if there's anything that you want to know about photography, video, video games, uh, cooking. I don't know. If you're interested in it, maybe I'll do a video. Just shoot me a, a suggestion down below. If you liked what you saw today and you learned something, I am super, super happy because that is why we're here. I encourage you to hit that red subscribe button and ring that bell so that you know every single time I put a video out and you don't miss out on all the fun, especially on this series of Just Go Shoot Manual. Thank you guys so much for letting me hang out with you and talk about cameras. I hope you guys got something out of that video. If you're interested in supporting this channel, there are a bunch of affiliate links down below. A small portion of anything that you purchase after you click those links goes right back into this channel uh, at no extra cost to you to help create more of these videos so we can all hang out and make a community. It's gonna be a really good time. There's a bunch of stuff down there, accessories and gear and Amazon links and discounts and stuff. So go take a look at that. And until next time, just to go shoot, and now just go shoot manual, because the best is definitely yet to come. Until next time, I'll see you guys out there. Peace out.